Hey everyone, so tonight we're going to continue with our rebuild and disassembly of our 20 valve engine. We want to tear it down completely uh, to its components so that we can rebuild it and do some machine work on it. So the next step is to uh, get off all the ancillary stuff like the exhaust manifold, um, the throttle bodies on the other side, fuel rail, all the pulleys on the front. Um, but first, before we get into that, we need to drain the oil. So what we're going to do is just put an oil pan underneath and we're going to drain it right from the oil pan. And uh, then we'll take off the oil filter. We have the sandwich adapter plate here. We'll take that off as well. But we're going to get all the, all the fluids out. So most of the coolant was drained when we removed the engine from the car. But now we've got to get the oil out before we start tearing down everything. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to drain the oil now. We have a pan underneath the engine. We're going to go ahead and remove the drain plug from the oil pan and then just let it drain. Uh, make sure to wear gloves. Uh, this oil may or may not be fairly dirty and sludgy. Unfortunately, we can't run the engine to get it nice and warm so the oil drains more easily. But um, one thing we can do is to undo the oil filler cap and this will help um, reduce any sort of vacuum that we're creating while draining the oil and let it drain more easily. And once we have that done, we're going to take the oil filter off and get the oil out of that and then keep going. We're just going to let the rest of the oil slowly drip out of the engine. And while that's happening, we can start removing things from the engine. I'm going to start with the exhaust manifold. Uh, we have to take the heat shield off, then we can get out all the manifold bolts. And um, this is the 16 valve manifold that I modified for the 20 valve block. It may be difficult to get off because everything is going to be rusted um, because the exhaust manifold does have the most moisture. But um, we're going to go ahead and take off all the bolts, heat shield, the support bracket down here and then get this thing off and see how it looks. We can see now with the uh, outer heat shield removed uh, all the bolts that we need to take off uh, the exhaust manifold from the engine uh, block and um, there's quite a few bolts here and we can really see the shape and design of this exhaust manifold. We're going to go with something completely new. We're going to make I'm going to make my own uh, exhaust manifold because I'm going to be going turbo. Um, but this is a pretty sturdy uh, manifold from the 16 valve. Um, I've read online you can go with the uh, TRD header, um, but for a naturally aspirated engine, there really isn't that many or that much performance gain uh, going to that uh, individual runners. So let's get this off. Um, one thing to note here, uh, I do have some pictures on how to modify the end bolts for the 20 valve head. You do have to cut it a little bit if you don't want to weld it. And you also have to block the EGR uh, port. So I just bought a transmission bolt and blocked that port off and it worked actually quite nicely. Also let's get that off. So here we have the exhaust manifold all removed. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the oil filter pedestal. Uh, we have the oil filter uh, pressure sensor, or sorry, the oil pressure sensor. We can remove the engine hooks. We have the oil pressure uh, switching valve. This is for the VVT on this engine. We can get that off as well. We can get off this coolant hose. Just going to strip down this whole side of the engine, then flip the engine and go to the other side. So we finished up taking off everything on the exhaust side of the engine. One thing to note, to remove the second part of the oil filter pedestal, the center bolt, this is what you have to undo. And as close as I can tell, it's slightly smaller than a 27 millimeter. That's the only socket I had that would fit though, and I had to hit it with the impact gun. I ended up rounding it a little bit. Um, but this center bolt is what holds this pedestal into the engine block. And so you need to hit it with an impact gun to get it out and then everything comes out nice and smooth. So we're going to move to the intake side and start disassembling that. 
One other thing to note is take a look at the, uh, the coolant passage there. Look how grimy and gross that looks. Um, sludgy coolant. So we're definitely going to clean that up. But just take a look at how gross that is. On the intake side here, we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, hoist bracket. Uh, this bracing here for the throttle bodies. We're going to remove the throttle body assembly with the fuel rail. Remove the alternator bracket here. Um, remove the uh, second alternator bracket here. So there's two. And uh, clean up this whole side of the engine. And then we'll get the fronts, we'll start attacking the front of the engine, getting all those pulleys off, water pump, etc. Let's get to it. I just wanted to show you an update on the progress. We got the uh, throttle bodies off. Uh, just to take a bunch of bolts out. It's a bit tricky to get at them, but you just use a long extension. Uh, alternator um, brackets off. Uh, we're going to pull the NOx sensor out here. This is the idle air control uh, unit. We're going to pull that off as well. We can pull off the water pump uh, hose and uh, unit right here. And then this side of the engine looks pretty clean. We'll move to the front after that. Another update here on the uh, intake side of the engine. Everything is off. We've removed absolutely everything we can. We're going to get to the front of the engine now. Remove all the pulleys and the water pump and all that stuff, oil pump. Um, let's go ahead and get that done. Here we have the front of the engine. We're going to pull off the uh, crank pulley, water pump pulley, the um, timing belt uh, protectors here. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired. Uh, timing belt protectors, there's these plastic protectors. Once we get all this, all this off, we can get off the uh, timing belt itself. We can get the water pump out. We can get the oil pump out, which is underneath the crank pulley here. But let's start with a center bolt here. And we're going to need to use that uh, crank tool that I've talked about before to hold the steady while we remove that center bolt. Let's go ahead and get that done. You can see here I have that crank pulley tool installed. We're going to hold it nice and steady while we use the impact gun on that center bolt. Now we might not really need it if we're using the impact gun, um, but it's just, just that reassurance that we can hold the crank steady while we remove that center bolt. Um, so highly recommend making yourself one of these. You're definitely going to be using it over and over. Working away at the front of the engine here, time to take off the water pump pulley. And this thing is notoriously a uh, pain in the butt to get off just because every time you want to try and re remove one of these small 10 millimeter bolts, the pulley itself wants to move. Uh, so what I do is I wrap my oil filter wrench around it, hold it steady, and then hit each one of these bolts with the impact gun. Just a short burst, and that is enough to get those bolts off, and we can pull the, uh, the pulley off. So that worked really, really great. Now we can remove this unit here. Awesome. And uh, now we're going to move on to getting the timing pulley, or sorry, timing belt off. Uh, get the timing belt off. We can get the water pump off. Uh, we can get the crank um, pulley off. This one's going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, I made the video on the special tool that you have to make to get that off. So we'll be using that and I'll show you how to do that. We can get the engine mount off here and then the camshaft pulleys, um, the camshaft gears here. We'll leave those on for now. We'll get everything else off first. Let's keep working. It's pretty clean on the front of the engine now. We're going to take the water pump out as well as the oil pump. Now we can see exactly what we need to get at. And we need to remove this crank uh, timer here, this pulley um, timer gear. Sorry, crank gear. We need to get this off. And for this, we need that special puller tool that we need to make ourselves. But first, let's get the water pump off, and then we can worry about that. And I'll show you the special tool that I had to make. Go ahead and take pulling off the crank timing gear. And we can see here the specialty tool that I had to make. 
uh, two jaw puller and I had to grind down the ends. So I have a video on how to make this um, and that's because to get the ends of the puller in here underneath the gear um, because this oil pump has this protective sheath here you really have to have these small little hooks that can get underneath there um, and once you have it installed um, you can just go ahead and tighten it up and uh, because I've actually removed it before it's coming off nice and easily um, and this is because I had to replace the oil pump gasket and my front main seal so it's coming off nice and easy I can just hand tighten it here and it's coming off um, but the first time you're gonna have to use either an impact gun or just a wrench and a specialty puller tool to get it to come off so we remove this and then uh, to get the oil pump off we're going to need to take the oil pan off because everything is connected so you can see here just how small the ends of that that puller are i had to grind them down and make this specialty tool so we're going to pull that off and then flip the engine upside down get the oil pan off get the oil pump off and then we'll move to the back of the engine to get the distributor off and uh, all the uh, coolant piping stuff. Let's keep working. I've decided that before I get to the oil pan I'm going to remove everything off the back of the engine and this is because when I want to try and flip it upside down this stuff's actually in the way so I can actually flip it up upside down the whole way. So I'm going to remove um, the coolant piping intake and outlet here. This is where the heater hoses go. We have one of the main cooling lines here we're just going to remove that off totally and we're also going to remove the distributor uh, before we remove the distributor though we're going to mark where it's where it is just so we have a rough idea when we put it back together uh, where to put the distributor for the timing and we're just going to use a paint pen for that and, or maybe a metal scribe so let's go ahead and get this off and then we can flip the engine and do the oil pan with the removal of the distributor and the coolant inlet here. We are basically done removing all the ancillary components. We now have a fairly clean and stripped long block. We still need to remove the head uh, oil pump and oil pan and to do, we're going to do that in the next sort of step here so we can get into the cylinders and take a look at those pistons. But fairly clean. So this is the second time I've cleaned up my engine. Uh, I've never actually gone inside the cylinders but uh, I did clean the outside so this is maybe cleaner than you you might see when you take apart your engine. But it's really amazing how small this 4AG is once everything is removed. The block itself and the head, everything, it just it's so skinny. It's a, such a small engine. I mean can't expect much from a four-cylinder 1.6 liter but um, in the next step here we're going to take the head off everything else off and just get that iron uh, block out and see what we need to machine down and uh, I'll hopefully decide on some pistons for my turbo project by that time and uh, we'll continue the build so stay tuned